Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be all about Sonya G. That's how I like to say her name. Sorry. In today's video, we'll go over the Sonya brushes that I have, what I use them for, and just to help you out in guiding your application technique. If you're stumped and have Sonya G brushes, they're sitting in your canister crying. Use me, please. I'm lonely. Then this is what we're going to get into today. We're going to get started, friends. Grab a snack and your Sonya G brushes. And let's roll into it. Hello, my friends. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alicia and Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves beauty and on my channel you'll find product reviews, tutorials, demos, and some flexibility tutorials which I'm looking to add more of. Just do you wait. You can find my movement adventures on Instagram and my class schedule, workshop, and pop-up events can be found on my website. You're like I'm trying harder with my outfit. I got my denim vest on. I got my favorite tank on. It says handstand junkie. That's what I am. I do have videos dedicated to Sonya G brushes. One video is when I tried her brushes for the first time and that's where I go over price breakdown, brush roll, and all those details. Second is her eye pro set and then third her face pro set. If you want to get into more specific details, their brush rolls and all those specifications, then head over to those videos in addition to timestamps in this video as well if you want to skip over to a specific brush. Where should I begin? I'm a little overwhelmed, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely have more Sonya G brushes brushes than I do Wayne brushes. And speaking of, I do have a how to use your Wayne Goss brush video on my channel and teeing off of that, a lot of you had requested that I do a Sonya G one and I'm really happy with your feedback because I'm always looking to improve my videos on my channel in terms of instruction and education. So I want to do a lot more demoing today than I did in my Wayne video. And the way I'm going to attack this is, because I know she does have her face pro set and her eye pro set, I'm going to tackle each brush individually. We'll talk about it, demo it, and if it is indeed sold in a set then I will mention that when speaking about the brush does that sound like a plan specific details like bristle length hair type and price can be found in my other videos or I would just highly recommend that you go to the beauty lish website on each product page you'll find those details also I will recommend Sonia G's own makeup blog sweetmakeuptemptations.com that's when you'll find everything about Sonia and I'll also say there's no better person than Sonia to explain her brushes and their use but since I am such a fan and several of you again had asked me to film this video here we are hi Sonia I hope I do a good job I don't wanna mess up if she ever has a Sonia G certification I'm taking it are you Sonia G certified <laughs> Why, yes, I am. I'm gonna start with face brushes. And with that, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. Maybe a little more. Okay. I have stopped at this point in my makeup routine because I do want to demo some of the brushes. So as of now, I have my foundation, concealer that is not set, but brown, and that's about it. All products will be listed down below in the description box. Here they are. Let's get ready. She did say her face pro set will be available this month in April. Don't know when, I think somewhere on her post I might have read middle of April. Not only will the face pro set be available, but the face pro brushes will be available individually which is what we're waiting for so i hope this video also helps in guiding you any purchases you're thinking about making if you're like i can't buy the whole set alicia but if there's one brush that you could recommend what would that be let's get into it now because we still have to set concealer and foundation i'm going to start with the brush that i usually like to use for those tasks i present to you the inochige did I say that right? I hope I did. The Inochige Pro from her Face Pro Set. This brush is immaculately designed. Because of its brush head, it's ideal for several purposes. I like to use this to apply loose powder under the eye. I also like this to set my foundation, to buff it out. You could also use this for precise application of bronzer or contour. Rule of thumb typically, when evaluating your brushes and choosing which ones you should use what for, it all depends on the brush head and the bristle length. This brush head is tapered, so anything tapered is going to give you a more precise placement of application than a wider flat top brush, let's say like her face number one. Its medium size is great to get into the contours of your face. Because of its tapered shape, you you could technically use this for a light application of highlighter on the cheekbones. Because it is so incredibly soft, you can use this to buff product after all your makeup has been applied or even to buff loose powder onto your foundation to set it. 
The reason I mention all those details is because if you have a lot of Sonji brushes or just a lot of expensive brushes in general, and it's hard for you to figure out like what brush do I use for what? Again, depending on the size and the bristle length. And this is not super tightly packed. So it's gonna give you just the right amount of placement of color. Something that's more densely packed, let's say her like her sculpt number two, is gonna put down a lot more color than her Inochige. But it's still gonna look airbrushed and not overwhelming. So keep that in mind as well. If you rather use a smaller brush for under eye setting, I totally get it. But because this is incredibly soft, slightly tapered, it still fits beautifully under the lash line and it's not gonna disturb your concealer. So let's go ahead and do that. I've been using my Hourglass Veil Translucent Luth Powder. I pat down whatever creasing that might have occurred. I take whatever is in the lid. So we'll take the brush on one side and what I typically like to, well, that's a nice design. Hello. I pat down the excess powder on my hand and then I take it to the under eye. This brush, I mean, it's so hard for me to pick out a favorite out of her face pro set, but this I think believe might be my favorite. <laughs> I just love how soft it is and it's so multifunctional. You could basically use it for any portion of your face routine, your makeup application. It's just not gonna disappoint and it's gonna hold you down no matter what you apply this with. The application is just incredibly soft and it dances around the skin effortlessly. It's just so agile. Like this is a ninja brush, it really is. And no, I'm not being racist because it's Japanese made, okay? Leave me alone. I'm gonna stop at just my under eyes because if we wanted to go in with another brush, this is her sculpt number four. Now it is undyed goat hair and another detail to remember, usually undyed bristles can be used with both cream and powder products. For instance, the Inochige is dyed so you will typically use this with only powder formulas. But let's say I wanted to apply a cream product. I reach for my sculpt four and because it is a fan brush, you can use this in a myriad of ways. It's more density pack so remember our points about being more densely packed you can apply more color that way if you like a high shine application of highlighting powder or even cream you'll use the sculpt 4 to place that on your cheekbone you could even use this very lightly with bronzer I typically wouldn't because I rather use which we'll talk about in a minute her sculpt 1 is a lot fluffier and I feel more foolproof for bronzing application if you wanted something a little more precise in terms of your contour powder or you just like that precise lay down of color then sculpt 4 will be great because although is a little more tightly packed than her let's say face 2 is it yes her face 2 because the shape not only places down product well it's ideal for buffing which is great because if you feel like you messed up because that happens to me you place the product down but the fan brush design allows you to buff the product and allows you to blur out the edges and fix those mistakes. What I'm gonna use this with is my Soleil Tan de Chanel, which I haven't used in a long time. It doesn't smell bad, it didn't go bad, and that's why I'm gonna still use it on my face. So I'm gonna take the sculpt number four with this balm. I'm gonna get some product on there. Use that side and just brush up towards my cheekbone. And it makes it so easy to apply. Again, I love the fan brush design because of that reason. It's pinched, so you get the product where you need it to stay, and then you start circling around to buff. Now, what makes this ideal is the bristles are so soft, so it's not gonna move the foundation underneath. And you'll see in a minute when we keep applying more complexion products, no matter how many any products we apply, the skin looks smooth, untextured, and airbrushed, which is the reason why a lot of people spend money on brushes, not because it's just the name, because I know there's some circumstances like that, but when it comes to Sonya G, Wayne Goss, Hakuhodo, Chikuhodo brushes, you spend that amount of money on a brush, so it does the work for you. And especially if you're not super comfortable with applying makeup, whether it be eye makeup or face makeup, and you just need a little help, you need a tool to hold you down and just to help you feel secure and going forward in your makeup application and knowing and having the confidence that it's gonna look flawless at the end that's why you spend the big bucks we got a soleil tan de chanel on that's what i like to use my sculpt for 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 four 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 at this point we could set the rest of the face i like to anyway and i could go either again with my inochige to buff loose powder onto my face 
or I could use my face one. The face one is a flat top brush and it's very fluffy in design, amazingly soft, and it just buffs product all and around your skin. I like to use this to either buff product at the end of my makeup application. I love this for loose powder application to set my foundation with. I also just like to use this for a very airbrush lay down a bronzer. I sometimes back in the Dizay, say back in the Dizay like it's been years like a few weeks in my hourglass ambient unlocked face palette i used the face one with this bronzing shade and it was just a beautiful application of color it picked up enough from the pan and it just laid it down smoothly really nice application i'll take this moment also to distinguish her purpose with between her first round of brushes and her pro set you'll notice that the first round of brushes that she released on beautylish have the thicker handle and her pro brush design handle is tapered that that indicates whether it's a pro brush or just a regular brush. The point of her designing these brushes, the first release, was that she wanted to make tools that will fill in holes in one's makeup routine. She wanted to create a problem solving tool. If you stop using a makeup product because you were just frustrated with it or you find there was a certain way you like to apply your powder, your cream or what have you and you just couldn't because the tools that you had was not delivering those results. This is why she designed the thicker handle brushes because she she wanted to make face brushes and eye brushes that were going to give you that pigment in the most easily and effortless way give you a flawless makeup application and not irritate the skin and this is why it's exceptionally important especially if you have sensitive skin you found that loose powders are just not your thing michelle wong mentioned this on her sonia one of her sonia g brush videos she had a hard time using loose powder because no matter what loose powder she used it just looked dry on her skin i'm normal to dry but i've never encountered a loose powder problem but we could always look a little more airbrush i'm gonna use a problematic powder with my face one just to show you how well it works this is the fancy beauty pro filter <laughs> loose powder. I don't use this very often. I'm not gonna lie. I liked it in my demo. It was fine. It's just a very dense powder that could, it could go wrong fast. You know what I mean, friends? Something like my milk makeup powder or even my hourglass veil loose powder. It's just more foolproof. I don't worry about it. Things could go wrong with this powder. So I'm gonna take the shade honey. I'm actually only going to apply a little bit in and around where I place the Chanel Soleil the Soleil Le Tan the Chanel. I'm not even going in this. I'm just using whatever is left over. Oh my God, see how much? No. Nope. So this is what I do. I press the majority in my hand and then I just take the brush and slowly start to buff it into my skin. The bristles are incredibly soft. They glide on the skin. They don't move your foundation. They don't won't move anything that you put on your skin. And that place the perfect amount of powder. My face is set. I don't need any more. You don't have to apply pressure either. It just moves so beautifully across the skin. Again, she designed this brush so it could do the work for you and you don't have to stress about anything this is a tough portion of the video because i currently have two favorites from her brushes that i love to use bronzer for i'll introduce them at the same time her sculpt one which i featured in my best of 2018 brush video and her Faith Pro. I love these brushes for bronzer. I'll, I'll explain different reasons for each. It's a fan brush. It makes it foolproof in terms of where you put it on your face to apply bronzer or even contour if you want to go that route. But because it is so fanned out, soft and airy, not only will you apply bronzer like in the best way possible, but you'll also be able to buff it out. You place it down and you buff it out. And it just makes for a seamless seamless application and since it is a fan brush and the bristles are long and airy you could also use this to apply loose powder that is exceptional for that purpose why not if you really like blush go ahead but that's the reason why i love sculpt one because if you're not comfortable with applying bronzer and you need a brush that's going to help you feel out on your face where the bronzer needs to go the sculpt one is perfect for that the face pro which comes in her face pro set and will also be available individually middle of april 
we hope. This brush is just intuitive in design. It's made out of undyed and dyed goat hair, but because it's so fluffy and slanted, it just makes it really foolproof to feel where it goes on your face. I love this for bronzer because again, you could just feel on your face where it goes. Sometimes I like to go up like this. I would recommend that you use the shorter side starting on the temple and then bringing it down from there. And this is still a very, very soft, airy brush that not only you could apply bronzer well with, but you could also use it to buff it out. I think Mel likes to use this brush to buff out her makeup with, so that's another use for it. You could also use this to apply your loose powder. I'm gonna do one side with the Sculpt One and the other with Faith Pro. How does that sound? I will use a formula that's a little tough to pick up. The NARS bronzing powder, for instance. This gel type of hard pan that you might have used in the past. Could it pick up product, kept digging in the pan, kept applying on your face, and your foundation's messed up. Cause you were just trying to get the bronzer on your skin and nothing was happening. She wanted bristles that not only were soft, but were gonna get the product, from the pan onto your skin in the easiest way. It's like someone who pays for your toll and makes sure there's no traffic on the highway. Let's first go in with Sculpt One on my right side. So you see the product there, it picks up a lot of product. More so I feel like another brush would. And we're just gonna go in and then buff up once we've applied it. Look how much came on my skin. But hold on, are you ready? Look how smooth my skin looks. We applied foundation, the Chanel Balm, loose powder, and now bronzer. And we're still gonna apply contour, just you wait. Let's do it with the Face Pro. I'm gonna take the short end near the temple first and then start brushing up and and work my way slowly down the corner of my mouth. And you primarily wanna keep it up and above and away from your jaw. Oh, I love this brush as well. I love them both. They really are just phenomenal for bronzer. I mean, you can't get any better than this. Let's take some now on the temples as well. Phenomenal for temples with the fan. This is just so fun to use. I love it. I love it. Jawline. Why not? Let's get in there. Look how much color I have on my face. Let me know down below if you have this type of bronzer, not particularly the NARS, but if you have like that hard pan gel type of formula that doesn't seem to be doing anything. So Najee. Now let's say you want to apply some contour powder. I explained this in my March Favorites video. I stopped applying contour powder because I always felt no matter how hard I try, no matter how much loose powder I use, it will always turn out muddy. I would apply the contour powder first and then the bronzer after mud bronzer first contour after mud but when you have sonia j or even wayne or any of our squad members you're gonna be good you could use any of these for contour. My particular favorite contour brush to use is the face number two. It just makes it foolproof in terms of feeling where the brush goes, where the contour goes. It is so lightweight and fluffy. It's incredibly soft on the skin. It's not gonna disturb any makeup you have there. If you have bronzer on already, if you have foundation, loose powder, cream, it's just gonna lay on whatever you want it to, right where you need it to stay and not cause trouble. If you like the Inochige for contour, this is the perfect brush to use for contour as well because of the tapered design. I particularly love her newer Sculpt 2 design for contour. This is, I have a video on this as well comparing both designs. This is her older design and you see that the newer one has longer bristles which will probably make for a more airbrushed finish. They're both phenomenal, absolutely. But if you feel like you need something a little more airbrushed in terms of application for contouring or even blush or bronzer, then definitely use the newer Sculpt 2. But I love the older Sculpt 2 for highlighter, oh my god. Technically, technically you could also use her Cheek Pro, which is also in her Face Pro set. This is such an incredibly beautifully designed brush. It's pinched, but also makes for perfect contour application because again, foolproof, you just feel where it needs to go. Very soft, buff it on, and you're good. I'll proceed to use my face number two with my Makeup Forever Sculpting Powder in S116. I'm just gonna take a little bit, not too much, like to pat down the excess and just go in very lightly. Like it's just foolproof, man. You can't get can't get any better than this. I simply love it. Just love how it feels. Feels nice. I'm taking the tip of that brush and 
pulling it just down the bridge of my nose or down the sides of it, you know what I mean? I rarely used to do that, but now I can't because it's so new day. What I love to use my sculpt number two, the newer design for it, is to further sculpt out my contour and my bronzer. I'll go in now, with, if, this is either H118 or H116. So I'll take that powder and I'll just carefully brush right under. You then just brush up towards the contour and the bronzer to further buff. This is like the most best part because it's like cleaning up, you know? If you feel you need a little more brightness on the center of your forehead, you could apply your banana matte powder there with the sculpt too. How are we looking so far? Smooth? I know. I also love to use the Inoshige as a, again, a buff or a carve. Blush. This is tough. You could use so many for blush. Again, Inoshige, the new Sculpt 2, the old Sculpt 2, the Sculpt 4, and of course, the Cheek Pro. Let's just use the Cheek Pro just so you can see this in action. Perfectly sized for the apples of your cheeks. So soft that it just diffuses color beautifully onto the skin. It just spreads effortlessly and just makes it look like a natural flush of color that you yourself produced I'm gonna take my hourglass powder and any uh, single pan compacts that you have I'm gonna use this shade because it's just so beautiful how this brush lays down product look how it just dances on the skin it makes it foolproof as to knowing where your blush goes you know like that's where it goes that's it so gorgeous I don't use it enough absolutely I don't use this enough how we're looking friends this is great so fun this is like a topper shade in the palette I'm gonna use the cheek pro and just put it like on top of the apples of my cheeks to give it a little more radiance and shine very optional but another use for your cheek bro highlighter I'm featuring the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold Highlighting Palette because I initially did not like this makeup product, but then I used the Sony G brush and it was all good afterwards. To quickly go over, you could use Sculpt Number Four, you could use the new Sculpt Two, you could even use the Inochige if you wanted to, the old Sculpt Two, or 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 the Detail Pro, or 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 the fan pro i love the fan pro because if you love to apply cream highlighters and you find them hard to pick up the fan pro is going to be perfect for that cream highlighter application let's try out in fact i'm going to grab the, the natasha denona bloom blush and glow palette i'm going to go into the glow cream here with my Fan Pro, and we're gonna get it on the skin. Keep in mind, this is not supposed to be a crazy application of color. If you're not happy with it, then the best tools to use with cream, ultimately, are your fingers. But if you don't like to use your fingers and you need something that's airy, small for the cheekbone area, that's gonna get the product down fast and efficiently, then Face Pro will be perfect for your cream highlight. Check that out, isn't that noise? And again, you always have to use your fingers. You just gotta do a little more smoothing. I'll interrupt myself to mention the way I clean my brushes daily is to use a microfiber towel and my Perian Spirit. You spray the brush bristles from afar and then you just wipe the bristles on the towel and it's going to get the pigment off the brush. For deep cleaning, again, either my Dr. Bronner's liquid soap, that's the baby unscented one, or even the Beauty Blender solid soap. Sonia just posted a really thorough and detailed blog of how she takes care of her brushes. I would highly recommend that you read that blog post. I will post a link down below so you can check it out. Powder highlighter. I particularly, and I love them all, I love them all. I particularly love the old sculpt 2 for highlighting application so I'm gonna do the sculpt 2 on this side let's take it through the bar of gold and just you see what I mean it just makes it so easy to apply I like to pull down I like to pull up and down you could even buff around if you rather apply it in that way See what I mean? A more precise application will call for a smaller brush head. Since the Detail Pro, again, sold in the Pro set and also individually going forward, the smaller the brush, the more precise the application. If you wanted a spotlight effect, you can take one of the colors with a smaller brush and just 
apply it when you need a little more bing. So in that case, I'm going to apply it right at the center of my cheekbone. Also, why not on the brow bone? Bridge of the nose will be perfect area for the detail pearl to work on and the cupid's bow. Look, look at that. And I didn't like the bar of gold palette because I wasn't using a Sonia brush with it. This is our like high shine, glossy highlight side. If you wanted something a little more low key, what will we use to give us a low key finish that's not high intensity color? What length of bristle will we use? Something that's longer and not as tightly packed. What do we have to achieve that with? Well, we could go in with the newer design sculpt too because the bristles are longer and the finish will be more airy. But you could also use the Inoshige for highlighter if you just want something radiant and not necessarily shimmery. Just so you can see, I'm gonna use this brush with the hourglass highlighter that's not typically crazy high shine, but I'm just gonna put it over over my cheekbone but see how easy that made it it's not crazy like this side although I mean this isn't bad either but if you just want that larger wash of highlighter that's not necessarily a shimmer powder but it's more radiant even if you wanted to use this powder that's, that's not as shimmery as that highlighter you could use this brush with it as well if you wanted to layer it up another formula that could be a little difficult to pick up is also a NARS product this is their highlighting powder in Fort de France this is again a gel -A type of formula that might be hard to pick up from the pan but no fear Sonia's here I'm gonna take her newer sculpt too go in Fort de France and just go pull 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 which I also like to apply my highlighter in this type of technique and because the fan brush makes it extremely easy to get on those areas of your face that might feel they're too small to use a bigger brush with you can still use the same side brush but because it's a fan shape, you could get it right under the brow. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I like this highlighter, but because I apply it with Sonia's brush or even Wayne's brush, look how smooth and shiny that looks. I just wanted to get you in for a close-up just so you can see how the powders look when they all have been applied. But look how my skin doesn't look textured. It still appears smooth. I don't feel overly made up. Now, if you feel that a lot of powder gathered here, you could always... I always end up spritzing with my setting spray anyway. And don't mind my hairs. It just feels smooth. It looks smooth. It looks like my skin. And we have a million products on our face right now. I've been using the new Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist to set my makeup. It is the, it is the best smelling watermelon scent. You just need... Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, our skin's looking good, man. Now, I forgot to show the buff step before I sprayed. I'm such an idiot. Anyway, it's fine. I'm good at this. Technically, you could use a majority of these brushes to buff your makeup with. My favorite, I love the Inoshige to buff the makeup with. I know we sprayed, but this okay. It's all right. We're just going to pretend like we did it. I'm taking my, again, Hourglass Veil Loose Powder. Just look at her go. Look at her go. So easy easy to buff now our skin looking smooth that was a face portion friend so hang on tight as we move into the eyes i believe i have a lot of demos in my sonia videos with close-ups i'm going to keep you here for now if i change my mind I'll zoom you in even more. The featured shadows I want to show for this demo are Natasha Denona shadows because Sonia actually designed her eyeshadow brushes with Natasha Denona eyeshadows in mind. I have the gold palette. We got Biba Barbecue. As I mentioned before, brows are done, but I did lay down my Too Faced multi-use concealer in natural beige for my primer. I got all the eye brushes here. Oh my goodness. I don't know if the eye pro set is still in stock or any of the individuals are still in stock she also restocked a lot of her originally designed brushes but i think they're designed with undyed goat hair she explains all of these differences in her instagram so if you haven't visited or you just need more details about those designs then head on over here they are all of my sony j eye brushes you know what i'm gonna go in like i usually do my eye makeup that's just what i'm gonna do it's fine Fine. Now the first step I like to begin with is my transition shade step. Usually I like to use a tapered brush to apply that product. So here in my hand I have her Blender Pro which is also sold in her Eye Pro sets. This is a beautifully soft brush that just moves elegantly across the skin and it makes anything foolproof to apply. If I were to 
quickly compare this to a Wayne Goss brush. The Wayne Goss brush is not as tightly packed as her Blender Pro, so it's not going to lay down as much product, but I do always love to have that brush on standby because of the fact it's not as tightly packed. I love how it blends out the powders on my skin. If you're not into transition shades and you're not into crazy detailed eye looks, I love her Worker brushes. This is her Worker 1. I also have her Worker 2 as well as her Worker Three. These brush heads are designed to pick up product efficiently and just lay them down easily on your lid. They're particularly helpful, again, if you're only looking to do a one shadow look. Because the brush head is very big, you get the product on one side and apply it, and then you can turn it on its head and then buff that product into the crease. I already warned you that I might look a little nutty by the end of this video because I'm demoing several things at once on one face. I'm going to do an easy eye look using one of her worker brushes and then I'm going to do a more detailed eye look using like her tapered crease brushes. For my single eye look, I'm going to go into Biba and use the color Rustic, this beautiful bronze metallic shade. All right, come in a little closer. That's good. As mentioned with her face brushes, because this is dyed hair, you will use this primarily with powders. But if you wanted to use a cream shadow of some sort, you could use any of her undyed worker brushes for that purpose. I'm first just going to use one side of the brush to get the product on my lid first. This picks up a lot of product at once, as you can see, and she had that benefit in mind when designing these brushes. She didn't want you to dip back in and out, in and out, 10 times from the pan. See, we got the product on there already. Done. You're like, this is enough for me. I'm stopping right here. I'm taking a little more but on the tip of the brush instead of on the flat side, turning it on its side, looking down, and using circular motions to just pull the brush throughout the crease. So see how the, where the crease is? The brush is just perfectly designed. It's very intuitive. You just pull it here, just pull it out slightly. I'm gonna take the same brush and now connect that top part to where we created that point from under the lash line to the lid. I always like to pull my eyeshadow out a little bit, but you're more than welcome to keep it more in or more circular instead of pointed. We're done. That's your eye look. You're welcome. Now for inner corner highlight, this is her Pencil Pro brush. Again, sold in her eye pro and individually. I like to take my highlighting shade with that brush and it's so nicely designed because it fits right on the inner corner but it's big enough to get a lot of color there we could also take it right under the brow arch now the brush that i don't use often from her and this not her it's just something in my eye makeup routine that i don't use or I don't do very often is using her smudger 2. The smudger 2 is designed to pick up a lot of color efficiently on the brush tip and lay it down on the lash line easily. If you're one of those people that like to use pot liners or cream something to smoke the lash line with as well as top and bottom then this is perfect for you. I typically don't do this with my eye makeup. I don't know why, it's just something that I skip or I just, I apply the eyeshadow and apply mascara and I'm done. We're gonna take Spot with her smudger too. I'm gonna look down and just punch and drag that shadow near the lash line. Now these bristles are incredibly soft and she had those individuals in mind that have very sensitive lash lines. You don't want the brush to be so soft that it's not gonna pick up any product. So you create that perfect balance of performance efficiency but also zero irritation in the process so if you want a little smoke and smoke and smoke that's what you do you can also take this to the lower lash line a particularly very sensitive area on the eye for several and there you go you gotta smoke your lower and top lash line her builder series this is her builder one it's of innovative shape in that it was designed to pick up just the right amount of shimmer and place it on the lid. I love her Builder Pro. The Builder Pro is a more traditionally shaped shader brush. The one that I'm used to using even before I started using Wayne or Sonia brushes is going to lay down a lot more product on your lid. So if you're more into standout lid colors, I would definitely go with the Builder Pro over Builder One. But if you're looking just to apply a light wash of color or even a light application of shimmer, we're then going to dip into her gold palette. And I'm going to take one of 
these shiny shades that we don't want a lot of, but just enough to add twinkle to the lid. Make sure when using any of our builder brushes that you zigzag wiggle in the pan to get the product on there and then just pat it where you want it to go. So it makes it very easy for that purpose. I don't use the builder one often because I love my lid colors to stand out. I love high shine, lots of twinkle and sparkle. And it's not that it's a bad brush. She designed the builder one in mind because she actually doesn't like a lot of shimmer on her lid and a lot of people don't. So this is just from my perspective in terms of how I like my my eye application to go so if you don't like a lot of shimmer on your lid then builder one is definitely the way to go in terms of buying one of the eye brushes builder pro is the way to go if you want more color on the lid at one time and it be more opaque in that way this is her worker pro and in comparison to her original worker series with a thicker handle is smaller and more tapered and thinner as well. You're gonna get a lot more movement from the Worker Pro instead of Original Worker. Well, this is her Worker 2, Original Worker, the one we used to apply the bronze shadow with. This, I feel, is designed for more simple tasks. This, I feel, is just designed for a little more elaborate work for your eyes. Let's get into the more detailed eye. Again, to first put down my transition shade, I'm gonna go in with the Builder Pro and I'm gonna use Rayon. Lid is unset. And this brush is just beautifully sized to fit right in the crease. It's incredibly soft. And the way to use your Builder Pro is to get the product on the brush. I like to use windshield wiper motions to get the product on the crease. And then you go in with circular motions to further buff out the product. I'm looking down so I see where their application is going. It's just foolproof in terms of the design. I mean, that was incredibly easy to apply. And if you're afraid of applying transition shades or you don't like elaborate eye looks because you just feel they never turn out right get yourself a blender pro I'm just building up rayon a little bit so again pull it through windshield wiper motions first to get the product on the crease and then when the product has been deposited that's where you go in with circular motions to further buff and blend if you wanted a more concentrated placement of color this is where her crease pro comes in I don't have her original crease brush and I think that has been recently redesigned. I love this brush because it's more tightly packed than my Wayne Goss number no four. Though number no four is a little more fluffy. If you want more color placement on the first application, then you'll get the Crease Pro. And this is particularly helpful for small hooded eyes because it is a smaller brush head than the Blender Pro for sure. It's gonna fit right in that crease and just get the color there beautifully and easily. So let's go in with Pasha. First, get it on the outer V. I like to stamp it on first and then using the tip of the brush and then I'll pull it through the crease with my windshield wiper motion and now circular motions to further buff the product done you see what I mean if you want to go back in with your builder pro to further blend out the edges and that's gonna further diffuse that shade if you bought the eye pro set and you're like well what the heck am I gonna use the worker pro for well I love a very smoky lash line but if you like it in between very smoky and not so smoky then this is the perfect brush to get color on the lash line. Let's go in with Rayon again with the Worker Pro. I'm gonna pull it across the lash line and connect it to what we did on the top. Incredibly soft, will not disturb your lower lash line, will not irritate it, and it just gets the color there so easily because it's just the perfect size for the lower lash line. We could go in with Pasha as well with the same Worker Pro just to the outer V or outer third I should say, maybe a little bit on the inner. So easy can't stand it. I do have her pencil one, which also was recently redesigned. I don't use this often because I love her pencil pro. It's a little more dense and it just gets color on there fast, but this has a role in your makeup routine if you have very sensitive lash line. This is incredibly soft and very tapered. So if you like a light application of color, if you don't want it heavy or super pigmented, then pencil one will be great. I don't I don't use this very often because I love a lot of pigment on my lash line and my lash lines are not particularly sensitive so it's okay but if you wanted to use this let's just say I'm gonna dip into Monroe you could very much use this for your inner corner highlight and it's very soft and it picks up a lot of product I mean that's a great placement of color just with that one tap in the pan I'm also gonna take it under the brow arch 
And again, Sonia had efficiency in mind. She didn't want you to constantly dip back into the pan a gazillion times to get the amount of pigmentation that you were looking for. Once and you're done, that's it. This next portion of the eye routine is tough because I love two brushes for this purpose. Builder 3 and the Builder Pro. The Builder 3 was recently added to her original collection and the Builder Pro is included in her eye pro set and also sold individually. It really just comes down to what shape you like more. The Builder 3 is more square in shape and the Builder Pro is more tapered. Builder 3 gets color on your lid fast. It is just so efficient in color placement, but I also feel it's incredibly soft still that you could technically still use the edge to blend the inner portion of your lid. But what I love about the Builder Pro is that again, it's still efficient in picking up color. Because of its tapered size, I feel equally as phenomenal to place color not only on the lid, but as well as the innermost third because sometimes I like to put another shade there as well in addition to what's on my inner corner and lid. This is also great for lower lash line but so is the Builder 3 so it all comes down to shape preference and how you like to apply your makeup. I'm going to use both for this demo but you could use any of these brushes for those purposes. I'm going to do something a little wild and go into the gold palette. <laughs> I'm picking up Oro with the Builder 3. Because this brush is bigger in size it's going to pick up a lot more at once. I'm gonna wiggle to get even more. Oh my god. There we go. Look at that shine. Now I'm gonna take this shade with Builder Pro and put that on the innermost part of my lid. You could also wet these brushes too. So I'm gonna take that same color with my Max Fix Plus, get it on the inner portion of the lid. And look how that bumped up the shine. But the reason why I love this shape is just look how beautifully it fits into this part of my eye. And it does not stab me. Just so you can see, going in the Builder 3 again, but with this fun duochrome shade, I'm gonna wiggle that on the tip, not necessarily on the flat side of the brush, and just take it on the inner third of my lower lash line. Wetting is bigger than the Builder Pro, but is still really great at detail work. I'm taking another shade from the Gold Palette. Why not? We're just gonna go Gold Palette. Builder 3 for the inner corner. Why not? Not too bad, eh? I didn't talk about this brush, but let's do it. This is the Crease 2, one of her newer additions to the original line. In comparison to her Crease Pro, Crease 2 is a little bigger, is more tightly packed than Wayne's number 4, or even I think it's around the same shape as the uh, number 18 or 19. It's going to get color on your crease fast. So I'm going to take Log from the Gold Palette. This is great if you have bigger eyes. I'm just going to take it in the crease again, first with windshield wiper motions. Once I get it on, I start circling up. Out. The tip makes it very easy to just pull the shadow out if that's what you like to do. There you go. We got real smoky real fast. So the crease number two is a little bigger in his brush head. It's going to put down color fast, but it's also very smooth. The bristles are incredibly soft and will still manipulate the product beautifully well on the skin. See, it doesn't pull. It's not dragging. It won't skip. The Blender Pro is a little looser than her crease pro or her crease two. And in that case, I'm going to take let's say hmm I'm gonna take this shade here and if you have small eyes and you don't know what to use the blender pro for then the blender pro will be great for buffing out edges the brush is incredibly soft and you can use it to buff out the edges of the shadow to make them smoother you can also do it for the lower lash line so that's just gonna help soften that up if you have big eyes and you have shadow everywhere I like to use the detail pro for cleaning up my shadow looks like let's say we got a little out of hand there yeah you just take a little bit of loose powder with with your detail pro and just very lightly buff the edges of the shadow and it kind of serves as your eraser and that just further smooths your shadow that pulls toward the brow point if you want that to look more diffuse another way i like to use my detail pro all right friends let's apply my mascara and i'll be right back all right friends face is done with two different eye looks but it's all good i hope this video helped in providing some guidance in how to use your sonia g brushes i know there's a lot of information out there and sonia is phenomenal in sharing how she uses her brushes and why she designed them and just the different ways you could utilize them in your makeup routine. I love to talk about makeup and just helping people better understand makeup products, tools, and what have you. If you again were feeling frustrated with your very expensive makeup tools, they were sitting there, you didn't know how to use them, with what powder, with what cream, with what eyeshadow, with what brush, hopefully this video helped in shedding some light on those challenges. Let me know what your favorite Sonia Jeep brushes are down below. 
until then, friends, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. But until then, I'll see you on here again with another chit chat tutorial demo review or how to. Take care and I'll see you again soon. I will also post plus edition in a dish in a day 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 da 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 da. On each product day, product day. This brush is brush. If you rather use a smaller brush for under eye, 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 and something like. But I love the older sculpt too for 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 for, for, for perfect. For, for, for. My transition shade. Transition shade. Hang tight. Let's see what happens. Powder in my eyeball. Oh, what happened? Oh my god. Go back in. In comparison to her Crease Pro. Oh, that's dirty. To further burf, burf. I'm gonna put on some mascara. But I forgot my eyelash curler. Oh, what's that? Oh my god. Powder everywhere. Everything's falling. What else is new? I'm giving this exhibition, this mascara, another chance. It needs, to, it needs a little rest in the tube when it opens.